Hey guys, my name is Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, and welcome to my second attempt at my very first YouTube video. Normally, I am an Instagrammer, and I say Instagrammer with quotations because it's not like I have like a big following or anything like that, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you either know me in real life or you know me from Instagram, so thank you for watching. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys, um... Normally, this is something that I would put in an Instagram post. It's pretty much what I do on Instagram is like little reviews and my opinions and things like that. Um, but today, I have an opinion that I thought was too much for one Instagram post. So I wanted to make a YouTube video about it. And I thought that it would be a good choice for my very first YouTube video. And I'm going to try, try my hardest to not say first YouTube video every five seconds because that was a problem with the first take of this video. A um, couple things before I start. One, um, I'm using like artificial lighting right now, like a tall lamp over there. So if the lighting doesn't look right or anything like that, I'm sorry about that. I do normally um, rely heavily on natural lighting. There's a window right in front of me, but it is 6 o'clock in the winter, which means that it's pitch black right now. And um, also, number two, I live with other people. Um, there's a lot of chaos always happening in this house at all times. I'm going to try my best to like edit anything that's too ridiculous out of the video, but if you hear background noise, people are watching a movie next to me, there's laundry happening behind me, there's dishes being put away, we're a very loud Italian family and I can't control that. Um, also you're probably going to see my hands move around like crazy because I'm also a crazy Italian person. But anyway, the point of today's video is basically to talk crap about the brand Too Faced. Um, follow my Instagram, you've known that um, I recently purchased two palettes from them, the White Chocolate Bar palette and the Chocolate Gold palette, and I have some pretty strong feelings about both of these palettes, and coincidentally some pretty strong feelings about the brand Too Faced as a result. So I'm going to try my best. I had my thoughts like really well organized in the first take of this video, but there were some like cinematonic, 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 there are some qual issues with the fucking video that I didn't personally like, so I figured I would try it again. Um, so I'm going to try my best to edit any little pauses I may make where I'm catching my thought or things like that. I also feel like I'm talking very fast because I am nervous and it's making me out of breath. That and being a big ass bitch. But anyway, so like I said, I purchased these two palettes and I have some pretty strong thoughts on both of them. So, first and foremost, I bought the White Chocolate Bar palette. It released on Black Friday and it had been teased on social media. And people weren't kind of happy with it because the colors are kind of like weird and that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that this palette is crap. It's honestly, for high-end prices, for a $50 price tag, this palette is crap. Um, and I say that because... Like, side note, personally, I know I, like people didn't like the colors for this. That doesn't bother me. I like interesting and new colors. I like putting colors together that don't necessarily make sense or I wouldn't have thought to put together before. I like experimenting with my makeup. I consider myself like a creative person. Like, that part didn't bother me. What bothers me is there, if you're any, if your skin tone is any shade deeper than mine and I'm like a walking ghost, there's no way this palette's gonna work for you. Let me see, I, I, I'm not here to like do a review, so I don't wanna do like crazy swatches or anything like that, but come on, like, and if you notice marketing this, they only showed swatches up until like today of this palette on fair skin tones, and they only showed makeup looks on fair skin tones, and that really bothers me. But on the other hand, this, Gold Chocolate Bar Palette is freaking amazing. And I've talked about it on my Instagram. A lot of people said that the quality was better than past Too Faced shadows. And I totally 1000% agree. I'm going to try to get like some nice pigmented swatches. Because this palette is pigmented as fuck. And I feel like a range of skin tones could use these. But I'm not here to review palettes. I'm not. that. I do that crap on my Instagram. I'm here to critique the brand. I'm here to review Too Faced as a whole because I think a lot of the things that they've been doing, especially this year, 
have been driving me crazy as a consumer and I think that a lot of people are on the same boat with me with a lot of these thoughts. So I'm going to try my best to organize this in a way that like makes sense but I know this video is going to be really long. So if you like ranting about makeup and like crap like that because I know those are the videos I like to watch then you'll probably love this video. If on the other hand though if you could care less about what I have to say or if Too Faced is your favorite brand and you think that I'm just some like bitch on the internet talking shit then that's fine too. Click out. No harm done. But I feel like these things are important to address because I think it's very important to think about where your money goes as a consumer and um, I have a lot of thoughts. So the first thing I want to talk about goes back to that I bought those two chocolate bar palettes at the same exact time. They both released like on Black Friday and then the following week and there was hype for like both. Kind of. I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, the quality of, the, of both those palettes is not equal. They released at the same time but one totally like shot through the roof of the quality. The other one feels like they just got some crap together and released it really quick for Black Friday. Which is probably what they get. So I know if you hear my chair creak it's because like I haven't figured out my filming situation yet so I'm on like a really antique stool that my great grandfather built so bear with me. Um, to me I don't mind if a brand is going to release multiple collections at multiple retailers. I think you know a lot of brands do that. Too Faced does that where they have Amazonian clay at, Tar at, um, Tar at Ulta and they have Rainforest of the Sea at Sephora. Like brands do that. I don't care. So they release you know white chocolates exclusively at Sephora and then Too Faced um, Too Faced. Can you hear me? They released white chocolate exclusively for Sephora, then they released chocolate gold at, um, first at Ulta, now it's kind of everywhere, but anyway. This isn't the first time that they've done that. Um, in the summer, they released their hugely marketed peach collection the same time that they released their Candy Johnson collection, and that bothers me because it's almost like I couldn't even enjoy one collection before being pushed the next at the same time. Plus the marketing of one always seems to outhype the other and I don't think that's cool. Um, for like just going back to these two palettes, the chocolate gold palette had a crazy marketing campaign. They came up with lipstick, a highlighter, all that crap just recently dropped. So it's almost like why did you release the white chocolate bar in the first place if it was going to already be on the back burner to this other greater collection that you were more excited about? And like I said, they did the same thing with the Peach Collection and the Candy Johnson Collection, which pisses me off. They released the Candy Johnson Collection at Ulta the same exact time they released their Sweet Peach Everything Collection at Sephora. And to me, the Candy Johnson Collection was amazing. It was one of the best things that Too Faced had put out this year. And all the marketing or the branding rather was really cute and really specific to Candy Johnson. It really fit her personal brand and who she is as a person. And it really was good quality stuff and I really liked that whole collection. But I almost feel like nobody cared about it because the Peach Collection, which was the biggest deal, came out at the very same exact time. And there's commercials still on YouTube running for that collection. And I don't get why they did that. I don't get why you would invest all the money into two collections only to release them at the same time and have one overshadow the other. And they did the same exact thing with white chocolate and chocolate gold. So everyone's talking about the chocolate gold palette and everyone's kind of like, eh, fuck you to the white chocolate one. I don't, why not just put the time into making one collection for one season really spectacular and move on to the next season when enough time has passed? Because these palettes aren't even cheap. Like, Too Faced isn't a drugstore brand. They're a high-end brand. Those palettes cost $50. I'm not someone who can... Like, I'm not a beauty guru. I don't get PR shipped to my house every day and it's like, oh, look at this palette. Let's move on to the next one. When I see, like, pictures on Instagram of palettes that are going to release that I'm really interested in, because I'm, like, an eyeshadow junkie. I love collecting eyeshadow palettes. I have to put money aside so that I can make sure to like get it when I want to get it even though like the moon edition hype whatever but I'm not even someone who works year round I'm a full time student I'm running my second degree right now um, I'm doing I've been published I'm doing research assignments like I'm doing a lot so I can't really afford to work at the same time in school so I work really hard the rest of the year when I'm not in class to save my money. So that money that I'm putting aside is very precious to me, as I'm sure everybody's money is to everybody else. So I can't afford to drop $50 on a palette 
and get hyped about it only to like freak out and have to get hyped about the next thing. And I get that it's like it's makeup, it's not that big deal, I could just not buy it. But I feel like in the world of makeup, like the hype exists and the hype gets us reeled in, that's the point. And people are pushing these products at us, our favorite influencers are pushing these products at us. So we feel like we do need to buy all these things and I just feel like it's almost like not fair because the average consumer isn't the big beauty gurus and the big studios that are getting this shit sent for free. It is people like me who are putting money aside like every paycheck so they can get the one thing that they're really excited about. So that's just my first complaint is that I wish that they would stop peddling so much crap to us at once. Like I get that like brands like Colourpop do the same thing and a lot of the time without warning they'll just drop new products on us. But their price point is so affordable that it's okay. If I spend $16 on a palette that I compulsively bought and ended up not liking, like, that's fine. I'll get over it. But $50, just so another $50 palette can be pushed at me, just so another $50 palette can be pushed at me, and they're not even good quality to begin with, that's really what started this me wanting to get on camera and make a rant because it's not, they're not even good enough quality to justify all this tomfoolery. And that brings me into the marketing because Along with marketing all this crap at the same time, I don't feel like any of their marketing makes any sense. Um, I think it was Makeup Struggles and Georgia Harris, who are two of my favorite YouTubers, because they also just talk their mind. They did a collab, Anti Hall, which I loved, and they both talked about how they don't understand what Too Faced is trying to be. Because on the one hand, Too Faced does this whole like, sexy tongue-in-cheek like wink wink kind of packaging like better than sex mascara or like the glow job mask which is so annoying don't even get me started but on the other hand they do like super cutesy things where they do clover palette with yeah it's on the dog's butt which is so <laughs> anyway or they do like the cute the too cute palette which came with stickers and like so I don't get like I don't know maybe it's just because of my background I've worked in retail almost my entire adult life up until very recently I'm um so I get marketing and I feel like how you market your products says a lot about who you want to buy your products and I don't get who Too Faced wants to buy their products I'm assuming it's people like me who I'm 25 so like people in their 20s who aren't fully grown out of like the cutesy thing but can still like get like the sexy thing it's not like inappropriate like I think but I don't know I kind of wish they would just fire their whole PR team and like really sit down and think like what is it that we want to be because I feel like packaging wise Too Faced kills it and I don't think anyone could disagree with me on this I feel like you know their peach collection for as ridiculous and useless as some of those products were like the bronzer that wouldn't work if you were like any deeper of a skin tone than mine like it was shaped like a pie like that's adorable and their sweetheart blushes that are so cute and you want to collect them all because they look like Polly Pocket packaging or like things like that. And Too Faced is like really good with running with what works. Like they released the peach palette and there was so much hype. So they released like a whole peach line. They did that and of course they do that with like chocolate everything and they're coming out with a unicorn collection which passed. But anyway, so like the part, the packaging part is great. The marketing part I don't get and it very, it's very clustered and it's very confused. And also they tend to do this thing where they'll tease products and they don't even have their story straight with it so that leads like everyone else to not have their story straight about it. Like for example, the Clover palette came out, first they said it was coming out in August, it came out in like the fall, October, November. And a lot of people are under the impression that buying that palette donated to charity. In reality, it was like to celebrate that they had donated to charity, which is some just more corporate greed bullshit because yeah, they donated to charity, but now they're making all this profit off of this palette that they're going to put back into their pockets to replace what they donated to charity. But anyway, so I don't really get their marketing. I don't get it. I think it's too much at once. I think it's just too much in general. I... <sighs> I wouldn't mind like all of this product pushing if their product quality just lived up their product quality lived up to what their packaging quality is. Um like this packaging to me is really cute. It makes a lot of sense the fact that all their palettes smell like chocolate. Like I get it, it works, it's cute, I'm into it. I think their packaging is honestly what makes me keep buying from them. 
but their quality is just not consistent. Like I touched on in the beginning, not to mention it do it's not going to work for everyone. I just think in 2017 there's no excuse. There's no excuse why a palette should only work for someone with my skin tone. There's no excuse why we can't release a line of products that works for everybody. And I feel like that's why everyone got so hyped about Fenty because right off the bat they were like, hey look. Look at our shit. It's gonna work for everybody. Fuck off everybody else who can't figure that shit out. And then every other makeup brand like scrambled to like get on that level. And I think Too Faced is doing that right now. I think I think it's great that like Jackie Ann is working with them to expand their foundation line and all that stuff. But it just seems like, I don't know, pandering. I get, anyway, that could be a whole other video. And like going back to the marketing thing though, something that I really don't get is like how involved Jared and his dog Clover, if you don't know, Jared is the owner of Too Faced. They're now acquired by Estee Lauder, but he is the original owner of Too Faced. He is like so forefront and like the face of this brand. I don't think I fully get it. He's very much like, look at my cutie dog, look at my cutie life, look at me. And I feel like, I don't know, I just don't, that goes back into, I just don't get the branding. I feel like you look at a brand like Urban Decay, they're very like, grungy in the alleyway, maybe doing drugs, who knows, like, that's consistent in their whole product line. Or like, um, Kat Von D is very like, tattoo artisty and gothic, she has her own art, her makeup artistry team all kind of has that same gothy kind of looks, so that is consistent throughout the whole thing. Even Tarte, like I said, with their two lines, very consistent. Too Faced just isn't consistent across the board. I think that's the point of this whole rant, is that I'm sick of, personally, I'm sick of spending my money on a brand that honestly is used to be considered one of the top of the top like tier high-end brands out there like one of the ones that people would recommend above anyone else like Too Faced Chocolate Bar was one of my personal first high-end purchases that I made for myself that palette and I recommended it to a lot of my friends and to me like they were known for having top quality some of their products are like cult fan favorite products better than Sex Mascara the Too, Fa Too Faced Hangover RX Primer, like, those are things that people love and swear by, but I don't think any of the things they're releasing lately are going to be anybody's cult product. Like, I know, like, one thing that I did love, the Peach Foundation, I have, like, crazy long school days. I'll put a full face on at, like, 7 in the morning, and sometimes I don't get home till like, 10 o'clock at night, and I love that foundation. I really do think a lot of people did, but other than that, I can't think of one thing they've released this year that like was a showstopper that everybody was like holy shit this is my new holy grail everyone and of course everyone's telling you to run out and buy everything I don't even know why I was about to say that but you know what I mean like there wasn't anything that's like this is going to replace all of your loose powders this is going to replace all of your whatever it's just it's all kind of like mass produced quickly thought of push it out fast crap and I know none of this is honestly a big deal like, I, you know, you don't have to buy makeup, I don't have to buy makeup, I could stop buying makeup tomorrow and I would still have so much makeup for the rest of my life that I would probably never get through. I always joke that um, my loved ones are going to have to bury me in a tomb of all of my makeup because I own so much makeup. But that's kind of why I have my Instagram to begin with and kind of why I wanted to start this YouTube channel. Um, I feel like if anything can be learned from my compulsive shopping, it's just maybe to give you guys an honest review and tell you what to save your money on, what's not worth buying. I'm a big fan of Kimberly Clark, who is the queen of stop shopping. And I just feel like, you know, as consumers, we do need to be smart. We do need to stop putting money into companies' pockets that aren't doing the best. And I feel like there are better brands out there with better products that do suit everybody with consistent packaging that deserve the attention that Too Faced is getting. Like, I think, like I just saw yesterday, that they were voted brand of the year in some magazine, and I just, personally, I don't get it. I think there are brands out there doing more, catering to more people, just with better quality products. Um, like I said, if there's anything to learn from this video, from my compulsive shopping, is just spend your money smarter, spend it in better places, and when you do that, it makes brands accountable. If brands are, if people come on camera and say, I don't like this product, it's garbage, it doesn't work, this is what's wrong with it, this is why I'm not going to shop from this company again. It holds brands accountable to change things. And I know people always say you vote with your dollar, but I do think that's 
blah, 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 capitalism, which could be a whole other video, but I do think a lot of that is true. And if people are suddenly going to stop giving business to a company because they don't agree with their ethics, their products, their quality, whatever, it is going to make a brand fix it because they want your coin. Um, so that's really it. That's why I wanted to do this. I hope that all of this made sense. Like I said, this is my second attempt making this video, and I really liked everything I had to say in the first video. I just didn't like of the lighting and angles and things like that. But um, I hope this. I hope that if you watched it and you got to this point that you liked it, that you got something out of it. If you agree with me on anything, let me know. If I missed anything, let me know. And if you disagree kindly you know talk to me about it I would love to have a dialogue about this because like I said I think talking about make with how much makeup that's pushed at us on a daily basis I think it is important to talk about the ones that aren't doing it right and the ones that aren't considering what their consumers want so yeah um like I said I'm normally on Instagram so I'm gonna have my Instagram listed below and all the other channels and people that I reference down below and I hope that this you know, gets received well, I guess, because I would like to keep making YouTube videos. I mentioned on my Instagram that I wanted to talk about why I'm not going to be purchasing from Kylie Cosmetics ever again. So if that's something that someone, anyone is interested in hearing me talk about, let me know. And yeah, I hope I did okay for this first YouTube video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!